Okay, next up we're going to have Keith Carlson and Tim Robertson, and they're both going for the State Representative Cheshire Six. All right. Okay, we're gonna start out with a 90 second opening statement. Okay, so, start here. Uh, I've been very active throughout my life and I've lived in Keene since I was four, uh, as my dad was and my granddad and my mother and my grandmother. Uh, one of the things was hammered into me that whether you succeed or not, it's probably your success is based on the community you live in. Uh, Keene is a great community. Cheshire County is a great community. It's been good to the Robertsons and the Robertsons have tried to be good to it. I've headed the United Way, I've been on the Y Board, I've been on the Salvation Army Board, I've been in the City Council, I've been on the Keene School Board, I've been on the Keene Planning Board, uh, I've worked on practically every drive there's ever been in this town. Uh, I spent a year, one night a week, sleeping and talking on the phone at uh, the suicide prevention people. Uh, <laughs> I've volunteered everywhere. I've had great employees, they treated me well, I treated them well. Uh, I've tried to live up to the parents I had who hammered into me and my brother and sister early that what we have, we got because of our customers and our employees and our fellow citizens. And that's why I run for office, that's why I've served, that's why I listen, that's why I, uh, when I disagree with somebody, I tell them so, etc. Can you go ahead and let everybody know what your name is? I'm Tim Robertson. I'm running in Ward 3. I've been in the legislature from at large and from Ward 5. I moved to get away from a staircase because my wife has problems with her hips. So thank you for moderating this. Thank you everyone that showed up. I really appreciate that the local TV station is going to air this. My name is Keith Carlson. I'm also running for Keene Ward 3. And likewise, my family has been in this area for generations, and I really appreciate that. And all that this area has done for my family over the years, whether it's been the factory that they've owned, or it's been the houses or the beach house or whatnot. Also, I would like to just talk about what I want to do. I would like to run for state rep, I'd like to win, and then I would like to cut your taxes. I would like to give you more freedom, more free time, cut the county taxes, the city taxes, the state taxes, and of course improve the economy and lower the cost of your health care. Thank you. Great, okay, now we're going to go into the eight minute Q&A um, with questions from the moderator. All right, so Keith, this time you'll get to respond first first question and then you'll get you'll get 60 seconds you'll get 60 seconds and you get 30 seconds to rebut okay so the first question is if elected what will be your highest priority my highest priority if I'm elected will be obviously to improve the economy that is the main issue that most people are thinking about right now jobs the economy taxes health care it's simple that's what we need to do and there's many ways to do fix all of these things. One thing to improve the economy, to bring about more jobs, would be to allow businesses to hire more people. That's one of the problems right now all over the country. There's so many regulations on businesses. It's hard for them to hire people. Their taxes are so high. In New Hampshire, we have just about the highest business taxes in the country. So that's a big detriment when you compare New Hampshire to other nearby states that actually some of them have lower business taxes. And then, of course, the whole country we're competing with and even the world. And so America obviously has some of the highest business taxes in the world, as probably everyone here knows. Our highest tax that hits the people is the property tax. Nobody escapes the property tax. And ours is twice what Massachusetts is. I have friends who moved to Massachusetts after they retired because they couldn't afford to continue to live here. If we want to get this economy in better situation, the capitalist system is built on consumption, consumers, the people at the bottom with money in their pocket. When the minimum wage is half what it was under Dwight Eisenhower, and it's less than 
the poverty level, which it used to be, it's now half the poverty level. One of the reasons there was no mother on my neighborhood, and I lived on the corner of Coolidge Street, which is not an upscale neighborhood, there wasn't a single mother who worked. They were all home, and when their kids got out of school at three in the afternoon, they were home to look after their kids. Today, most women are working. The kids from third grade are bringing themselves up when they get home in the afternoon. Nobody to watch them. Nobody to remind them what they're doing is incorrect. Yeah, I completely agree. Property taxes are way too high in this county. And I will definitely work to reduce your county property taxes. And also I will make sure that the state will last just like the Republicans and Democrats. They keep pushing things down to the county level and the town level. I will not do that. I will not push down anything to you. And I will cut your county property taxes. Every day I will try to cut your property taxes. Okay, what is your position on medical marijuana? In my first session of the New Hampshire legislature, I put in a bill to decriminalize marijuana. We have the highest prison population in the world. More prisoners than China. And what are they in for, for taking a drag on a, let, let me just tell you, these numbers may be off, but the difference between them are on the nose. A million people a year die of tobacco. A hundred thousand die of alcohol. All the hard drugs kill 10,000. There has never been one death certificate blaming marijuana. I don't smoke. I stop kids on the street and say, why are you smoking? You've read everything about it. It cost you five dollars every day to maintain that habit it's killing and it's addictive and they continue to do it you're not going to give up the hard drugs by making them illegal and sending their supplier to jail again i agree with my opponent we should obviously have decriminalized marijuana medical marijuana i've gone to concord so many times over the last few years a lot of republicans and democrats to push for medical marijuana and i was really sad to see governor lynch veto it I just, it's so hard. There's so many people that are sick out there that are near death. As a veteran myself, I know so many people with, that are suffering, so many veterans, so many elderly people, and they really need help. They really need medical care. And Governor Lynch and people just won't let it happen. I don't understand why they're standing in the way. I thought I already answered okay. that question. I am also a veteran, to throw that in. That's, that's the symbol of the unit I belong to. It's a donkey. It must have been a democratic unit, but we were the first ones to cross the Isthmus of Panama before the canal, and we were carrying our cannons. I wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the donkeys. I'm not as old as the Panama Canal. Almost. Thank you. So what is your preferred tax policy if you become elected? So that will go to Keith first. Well, obviously I'm against the income tax. If you look at the history of income taxes in the U.S., just like we said earlier, the U.S. started with a 1% federal income tax, and then it got up to 92%. So obviously that's not good. If you look at Connecticut, if you look at New Jersey, they started with high property taxes, no sales tax, no income tax. New Jersey is the best example because it started with the highest property taxes in the entire country. No sales tax, no income tax. Now it has high sales tax, income tax, and still the highest property taxes in the entire country. So you can't create an income tax, which is why I support question one on the um, ballots for November 6th, but also you have to lower property taxes. You have to use user fees as much as possible, just as was said earlier, and you have to cut property taxes. You have to expand the base of who's being taxed, which is why we need to attract more companies to New Hampshire and expand the companies already in New Hampshire. And if we cut the sales tax that we have in New Hampshire, the meals tax, then you could do that. Whether you believe it or not, it, companies do not pay property taxes. Their employees pay them, by getting less money, or their customers pay them 
by getting paying higher prices. Businesses do not pay taxes. I am a businessman. I own a lot of commercial property. I was in the automobile business. Uh, my brother is in the oil business. Any tax we pay is passed on to our customers or subtracted from what we pay our employees. Why don't we put the tax where it belongs and why don't we, like good Christians, the rich, take care of the less fortunate? Look what happened to Berlin, New Hampshire. They went in and sent the businesses to China or South America, then came in and tore down the mills so they wouldn't have to pay taxes. Now, what do the people in Berlin do? They starve. They don't, but close. So businesses do pass on taxes to their consumers. That's correct. However, a business will leave America in order to pay less taxes, or a business will leave New Hampshire in order to pay less taxes. So do you want jobs in New Hampshire, or do you want the jobs in China? That's your decision. That's your choice. Do you want the jobs in New Hampshire, or do you want the jobs in another state? I would like to have more jobs in New Hampshire. I would like to help the New Hampshire economy as much as possible. I mean, I like the entire world, but I'm really not focused on helping China right now. That My biggest priority as running for state rep is to help New Hampshire. Okay, and now we're going to open it up to the rapid-fire questions from the audience. Uh, Professor Carlson, uh, you keep talking about cutting taxes, cutting all those taxes. So you must have some plan about, uh, if we're cutting taxes, we have to cut uh, expenditures of the state. Where would you cut expenditures for the state? That's a great point. So we need to expand the base of businesses that are being taxed in New Hampshire, and also we need to cut certain expenses. So there's lots of welfare fraud in New Hampshire, for example. New Hampshire has the least restrictive welfare card restrictions in the entire country. So obviously that's one area, but there's plenty of areas that could be cut on the county level, on the state level. There's areas all over. And then also, of course, we can expand creatively on ways to create money. For example, you can expand charitable gambling. You can also expand gambling if towns are willing to allow that. So you can create ways. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. What do you do for a living? Yes, I work for a company that likes to promote liberty. Like, that doesn't tell me what you do for a living. I travel around the country and talk to people about ideas. And they pay you for that. I'll join you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wonder, uh, this is for, uh, so that's, that'll be his third question. Okay. Um, regarding your, your connection of property tax and income tax in the state of Connecticut, um, you do know that the, that the income tax was implemented to reduce the business taxes and in fact was not aimed at reducing the property tax. And it has really succeeded in reducing the Connecticut business tax well, far lower level than it is in New Hampshire. Would you um, then consider the income tax? I agree that business taxes are too high in New Hampshire but and they should be cut. And I agree that taxes are too high in Connecticut, but I'm not in Connecticut. And I never said that that was implemented to get rid of property taxes or whatnot in Connecticut. Please. Can I comment? Sure. I would point out that probably Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York who we're picking on about their taxes, their average income is probably two to three times what New Hampshire's is. Lower. Higher. It's income lower. is income. In, income. In New York, people make a lot less money than people in New Hampshire overall. Yeah. That's not, I don't believe that. Oh, yeah. well. Daryl? Uh, this is Mr. Robertson's My son works in New York. Uh, do you support fair ballot access, and would you support or introduce legislation that all candidates be treated equally for ballot access purposes? I'm not sure I understand the question. Currently, Republicans and Democrats have one path to the ballot. Everybody else has a much harder path to the ballot. It took the Libertarian Party $20,000 and 15,000 signatures to get on the ballot. Would you support 
the same path to the ballot for libertarians as Republicans and Democrats? I think once you get on the ballot, the next year will cost you the same as the Republicans and the Democrats. Probably the Republicans and Democrats paid the equivalent of twenty thousand. No, they're automatically ago. on the ballot. They are the now, day. and you will be too. Hmm. Only if John gets four percent of the vote. Well, should should we let? Uh, one tenth of one percent be on the ballot just because they want to be one person. Vermont has fair ballot access for all parties that are organized. They generally have no more than five or six candidates for any statewide office. I don't think that's a problem that should be handled, and I, I really don't see it as a huge problem. If you've got to have four or five percent of the votes before you can get on the ballot, I think one of the weaknesses of a third party candidate is who do they take the votes away from? The persons who most closely agree with them. That's why when, I forget which one, but when we had a third candidate for president, the, the one who lost was the one closest in philosophy to the third party guy because he stole votes from the person who agreed with him. Well, that assumes that votes belong to Republicans or Democrats. No, not belong to them but the person makes a choice when he goes in. If he says, wow, that really radical, I'll vote for them instead of the partly radical. Well, you said stolen votes, so. Okay, that's time, sir. Uh, well, we have whatever. any more questions for? Uh, for Mr. Robertson, uh, you were talking about tax, uh, how it's disproportionate that the lower income uh, demographic is paying a higher proportion of taxes. Would you support a homestead exemption in the New Hampshire property taxes in which if your property values are at or below a certain amount, let's say 100000 then you don't pay taxes on that? I don't amount. think under the present constitution you can tax people at different rates. One of the things we need is a constitutional amendment that will let us tax people differently. We, And I'm not, how do you determine a person needs a con, a, whatever you talked about a homestead, homestead exemption. Right. If I'm uh, Bill Gates and I move to Roxbury and live in a tent, do I get a homestead exemption for my 100 acres? Well, in the states, how it works is, let's say you have a property value at $100,000. If the exemption is at $100,000, then you're not paying any taxes. So if your property is $150,000, you're paying tax on $50,000. So it helps so that the poorest people still have a place to live, don't have to pay taxes on it, Yet, if you want to have a super large house, you're paying for the luxury of the larger property. But if I choose not to live in a rich house, even though I'm rich, I pay less taxes. Mm -hmm. And I claim New Hampshire as my residence, even though I spend six months in Florida or five months and 29 days you know, and live in a fancy house. I, I, I believe you should pay taxes based on your ability to pay, not on what you use. If I run a big factory in the city of Keene and I got 500 employees with a uh, thousand kids, they all go to school. Why shouldn't I care about them? I'm the cause that they're here. Mr. Robertson. Yes. That's time, please. Oh, we have time for one more question for Mr. Robertson. That was his third. Was it his third? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. So now we get our 60 second closing statement. Who goes first? Um, I believe that Keith will go, or no, Mr. Robertson will go first. Yes. Sorry. I I think I gave a pretty good uh, cross-section when I stood up. I've been a community activist all my life. I grew up in a good Republican home. Uh, I was Jim Cleveland, the last real Republican at the congressional level. I, I carried Keene by more than he carried the second district. He spent every weekend at home in New London. His widow is now a Democrat. Uh, I think the only governor we've had who showed really leadership was Walter Peterson. His widow is now a Democrat. Uh, the Republican Party that existed when I was young in New Hampshire was liberal to moderate. It is no longer the Republican Party I grew up with. It's owned by billionaires and they're only interested in filling their pockets. And that's not what community is all about. I should be worried as a New Hampshire resident about what goes on in Berlin, what goes on in Pittsburgh, and are those kids getting an adequate education? Not That's just in the kids in Keene. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. If you want to improve the economy in New Hampshire, if you want to increase jobs, cut your local property taxes and your rent. If you um, rent, I'll cut that because your property taxes will be cut for everyone. 
if you would like to lower your utility costs, I have a plan to lower utility costs by getting New Hampshire out of the program we're in right now. Right now, um, apparently $50 a year is what's asked for. So if you have a power company in New Hampshire, if you use electricity, Public Service in New Hampshire is asked to increase your fees by $50 a year. I would make sure that doesn't happen because they said they're increasing the fees because of the regional greenhouse initiative that some states are already looking or have already pulled out of. So apparently this program didn't work and it increases your fees. If you want to lower your property taxes, I recommend you vote for me. Um, also, if you should at least consider voting for question one. Thank you. Thank you very much.